You remember flash games? For the people of my generation, it was the time when having access to a computer and the internet meant that you were about to have the best gaming sesh of your life and nothing else. Commando, Bubble Trouble, Motherload, Monster Trucks, all these were pre brain rot days, you know, the skibidi prologue. But in this sea of easy access entertainment, one stuck with me and challenged the diminishing IQ of a handful of us at the time. A game that I thought was really hard and maybe the origin of my love for puzzles and hating myself for 10 minutes of gameplay. Block Souls. That name is so sh. Block Souls is a series of puzzle challenges released as a flash game in 2007, created by developer Damien Clark that I played the sh out of on the one and only miniclip.com. <laughs> that splash screen is so sick. The goal is to take this 1x2x1 block and move it around using the directional keys to insert it in the hole right there, making sure to not fall off the map and avoid coming back on trap tiles. Oh my god, just get in the hole. And you know, I love coding. Being at the beginning of my software engineering career, staying at the top of my A-game when it comes to testing out new technologies and sharpening my problem-solving skills is very, very important. One way to do that is to have passion projects that you need to push through when you encounter bugs and complications. In my dummy thick list of personal code explorations, I found this block source clone that I started to code in June of 2024. And obviously, like 99% of every coding projects ever, abandoned at the first bug I found. So since I have not done a brain melting coding session in a while and never documented one, this is what I was able to accomplish, learn and had to go through in 10 hours of coding a block source clone. Before jumping headfirst into the code, let's see what we already have from that June coding exploration. At the time, I only was interested in the movement of the block and making my own level editor. The stage scene, where the game actually happens, is made in 3.js to handle all the rendering and model loading I have done in Blender. And the level editor is made from scratch using the HTML canvas API. Both of these scenes are not linked whatsoever, the output of the editor is not optimized at all, and the actual gameplay scene is what we could technically call buggy as balls. We just established what we end the project, but now we need a plan. So this is where we start our adventure with an enthusiast Marius who has no idea what he will go through. This is our number one. All right, it is Saturday, November 9th, 2024. It is almost 8 a.m. So yeah, the goal is to work on this somehow and see if I can do something out of it. The first thing I did to refresh my brain of what the f*** I was even coding at the time was some obvious debugging, starting with these trap tiles. In the original game, when you pass on a trap tile, they fall down, giving you a game over if you go back on your tracks, which is not the case here. So I fixed it. Nice. Next was to add a placeholder animation when you fail and when you finish a stage. After trying to make my own animation handler, decided to take the easy smart way and install Animate.js. Very basic so far, but it works. After this coding warm-up, let's say, my goal was to have a set amount of features I would have to work on that day. That essentially allows me to keep track of my progress and not asking myself what my next task is when I finish one. You could use Trello, Notion, a simple to-do list, but my favorite way of doing that is to make a sort of to-do flowchart. For example, here we have the stage lifecycle. Decompose down what needs to be done in bite-sized tasks to consider the functional part of a stage done and get cracking at these coding quests from left to right. The brain is raining, we have a plan, and now it's grind time. Hour number two. Next on my to-do list was tackling the reset mechanic. Have a way in my code to call out a reset stage function to be able to restart my 3D scene from the pause menu, for example. Something that seems trivial, but hey, this is web development using TypeScript. If something can be stupid coding-wise, it will be. After a few lines here, some event management there, the reset mechanic was done. Next, I wanted to tackle my level editor serializer. To make it easy to understand, come up with a way that would translate the data from this 2D map to something my 3D playing scene would understand. This is the plan for our number three. Everything is smooth so far. Good flow state, reminding myself I love my job until a classic gamer moment. Okay, we are almost an hour into me trying to figure out why that does not work. Big array of objects dynamically transforming into a tile type. So essentially just take out the array. So enums that I don't use that much. So I transform that less and less clean as I try to make the... 
I'm not gonna go too deep into the technical details of what's happening here. Or should I? Would I interest you? Let me know in the comments. What I do find interesting I want to show here is that in this particular moment, if I was not on camera, this is the exact time where I would abandon the project. The problem I am trying to solve really is insignificant and could be fixed by just going around it and writing less interesting code. But right there for more time than I care to admit, I was deeply focused on just trying to implement some extra nice TypeScript and just lost myself in the process. But here, this frustration is where problems progress happens. Every time I found myself blocked on something like this and pushing through is where I learned the most. And by the end of hour number three, my serializer was working. GG's. Hour four. During hour number four, I was taking my serialized data and writing a parser to be able to start my stages. Going from a big file like this for just one map to a single string per map. And that's a win in my books. Spent a little bit more time in the level editor and now we have three maps in this tiny little array. Yay! I do still have to manage which map is played in the code, but progress. I am going to be honest though, I am starting to feel it. Four hours of coding by yourself on a Saturday morning, not the most exciting thing in the world to do. But David Goggins did not write the modern day Bible for me to quit right now, so we keep on pushing. And you yeah, look at me, coding is hard. Freaking put Oh look, we have a sneaky bug right there. Huh? Boom, a little bit of coding here, a little bit of there, boom, fixed. Fantastic. Hour 5. Now that the gameplay life cycle is mostly complete, I need the things that goes around the gameplay. UI, menus, bridge between the level editor and the map, there's, there is a lot to do. To plan this out, before I had the idea of making this video, I came up with this user story schematic, which included a way for people to have an account in the game, create maps, save them and share them with friends for example, among other things. You did guess it, just a good old dose of overscopium. There is no way I'm going to accomplish all of that over the course of a weekend and be happy with the end result. I am no CJ yet, you know, like, give me another few years. So put that to the side for a version 2 or whatever and I got cracking on creating a plan for just a simple MVP. Shave off what we do not need and just keep core features. Come in, play the maps, a little bit of fun in the level editor, f*** <coughs> off. Easy. Lunch time. Oh look, virtual! But when I jumped back on the project, something was off. I needed a fix of something. The thing I need the most right now, I think is a, maybe a walk, you know what I'm talking about? Fresh air, vitamin D, all of the things nerds usually don't know nothing about was very much needed. Walk time. Back from that quick stroll and back on a very serious grinding mindset. So just like any guy on this earth, I have a group in which we don't talk, we just send memes. This is the latest find. Apparently. Hour 6. After a few hours of coding in the morning, lunch and a walk, this is where we're going to start to face the afternoon crash wall. You know that 3pm crash that hits you in the back of the neck during the stand-up meeting? Yeah, that one. At that moment, I don't have it yet, but I know it's slowly creeping in on me. So the goal there is to regroup and come up with something to work on in a smart, efficient way. Now that I have a working, fat quotes on that, working gameplay, level editor, maps data, we have to put it all together following the MVP user story we came up with before lunch. That was the most intelligent thing to work on right now, but my game looks like <laughs> Let's be 100% honest right now. So I have a choice to make. Either I work on 3D stuff to make my game better, so nicer models, textures, UVs, etc. Or get cracking on the glue that would make that user story possible. A user interface or UI for the matcha people in the back. So with this difficult choice in hand, and like a very mature dev and a very stable life and absolutely no gambling tendencies. So what do we do? I say coin flip. Heads, I do UI. Tails, I do 3D stuff. Coin flip. For UI. UI it is. Let's go. To do UI, you first need a mockup, or at the very least, a plan of what you are going to need. Am I going to have a recurring structure? Do I need multiple states for my buttons? What colors can I declare globally? Is the primogen ever going to notice me someday? Questions. And all of these can be resolved by creating a Figma design board and come up with a few quick UI elements. You could directly jump in the code, but doing the Figma thing allows you to instantly come up with parent components and avoid out of the box over engineering. And it is by far the best design I have ever came up with. So don't get me wrong, it is pathetic, but at least we have an idea. Oh yeah, and the game still needs a name, right? So since this is the European vegan shit version of Bloxos, Zockblog. Just makes sense, right? 
It's obviously not much, but this menu structure is enough for me to understand how I will structure my components to have a smooth UI development experience. I am pumped. UI integration development is my stuff. It's just my sh** and it's going to be easy. <sighs> At that moment, it, it's tough. It's getting tough for sure, but we push through. It's go time. My project was generated from a Next.js boilerplate I had somewhere in my GitHub repos. The UI is just a medley of React components with simple CSS modules. Nothing too, too fancy. Started with the global setups of fonts, sizes, and colors until it finally happened. Nothing left in the system, dude. Brain fog, lights out, could not. When this happens, just like the first blocker we had this morning, I tried to ask myself this question. Would pushing through now would actually make me go back up to speed after a short while? On a technical blocker, the answer is yes. If I do it now or later, I am still going to go through that blocker anyways. But here, in a classic coding fatigue scenario, you are going to write shit code, take technical shortcuts that are going to blow up under your feet at some point, and just make you hate to work on that project. So with a heavy heart, a very tough decision was made. Let me be honest, right now, it's heading. Nap time. Huh? Two hours later, a nap, a big apartment cleanup, and you two being around, we are back. Or at least we try to be. We are so back. Let's get that UI working. My buttons are working, we have a menu listing components, the base is in place. Hour 7. With this new component, I set up the global state of my application using Zoo Stand. Zoo Stand? Z Zoo. That one. That one right there. To think about it the easy way, a way to have data that would be accessible everywhere in my app. Like keep track of what stages I have done to be able to unlock new ones, check if the pause menu is active or not during gameplay, those things. Using that state, I started coding my UI logic directly in there instead of using the router, like a normal web dev is supposed to do. I put that on fatigue, but spoiler alerts, we are going to ditch that idea soon soon. Not too many interesting things happen in this hour, just your classic coding until normal brain cells type of situation. Is this flickering? Oh, that's way better. And look, it's 5 p.m. now. Let's call it a day and see what we could accomplish with a night of sleep. Lights out. Huh? Hour 8. It's a new day, cardio is done, the shower is taken, the caffeine is in, the creatine is buzzing. Thinking about the project during the evening before, I decided to delete my state managed UI and handle everything with the React Router URL parameters. Technical jargon but stay with me. So that entire hour was refactoring and educate myself on how to not suck at route design decisions. I am also using the React app router structure, something I have not done yet, so hey, we learning. Hour nine. With a router now somewhat working, the goal I set myself here was to play around with URL parameters to retrieve small amounts of data to communicate with the 3D WebGL scene. So now using the URL, we can directly access a map by index and pass that data efficiently wherever we need it, thanks to the state manager. And look, this is starting to feel like a real app. Landing page, go to a map, pause the menu, functioning buttons, this is this is good. I decided to stop it for the moment for this Sunday, run a couple of errands, be fresh and ready for our number 10. Dun, dun, dun. Jesus. My brain here was in polishing mode. What can I fix or do for my app to be at the very least usable? Started with finally linking the level editor, now called the map sandbox, to the actual 3D scene. So now when creating your map, you can actually test it out in real time. Ain't that cool? I'm happy about it. There is also a few event listeners clean up here and there because, you know, JavaScript. And also using local storage via persistent Justin, 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 so that it keeps track of which map you actually played last, even if you close the web app and come back to it later. Oh, but hour 10, what is this? What is coming right now? I don't know what's happening. Bonus hours. Off camera, after these 10 hours, I continued to do a little bit of polishing. Some colors, a better UI manager, and a simple versal deploy from my GitHub so that you guys can actually go play the game now. It's over this URL. Right there, will also be in the description. And actually shading my 3D scene because that shit looked sad. But now we have some simple but yet functional actual matcaps. But hey, look, 
we made it. Honestly, I did not think I would enjoy this experience that much. I usually do that on my own on freelance projects or very intense coding explorations, but being aware that this would become a piece of content and document my thought process reminded me how much I love my job and I'm grateful to do this every single day. If you have any questions or suggestions for another project, leave it down below. I do read everything. Edge that algorithm, like, subscribe, it actually makes a difference. You, you know the song by now. Thank you very much for tuning in and I see you all very soon on the internet. Bye-bye, everyone. Whew.